Hey guys, Ricky here with dodcontract.com. And today we are going to talk about the defense contract formula. Now, specifically, I'm gonna teach you how small businesses sell products, services, new technologies, whatever they specialize in to the US military and other federal organizations. Now, this can exponentially grow your small business while making a profound impact on our national security and the lives of our men and women in uniform. So we're going to cover a few different areas here as we go through the process. First, we're going to talk about why this is such a big opportunity for small businesses. After that, we're going to talk about the biggest mistake that companies make. So if you've been at this a while and you haven't made any sales to the U.S. government or the U.S. military, this is probably why. And we're going to cover this. This is great for new businesses also because, you know, to be honest, this is the number one reason companies quit when they try to sell to the government. They don't figure this piece out. And the companies that are successful and have made a lot of money selling to the DOD and some of those other agencies... They've learned this by trial and error over years. So we could save you a lot of time here just with this one tip. And then finally, I'm going to walk you through the defense contract formula. That's probably why most of you are here. And I'm going to show you step by step what companies do to sell to the government successfully and continuously. All right, let's talk about the opportunity. The first thing to understand is that the U.S. government is the single biggest purchaser of goods and services in the entire world, and they're mandated to actually make purchases from small businesses. Now, we're not talking just weapons and bullets and armor and things that you associate with the military. The US military and other federal agencies, they buy everything that you can think of. And they're required to make purchases from small businesses. Now, that 23%, the uh, SBA, the Small Business Association, sets the standard for each of the agencies for what targets they're supposed to hit each year for small business contracting efforts. And by the way, the DOD almost always exceeds that 23% number. Now, what does that look like? In 2021, the federal government spent $154.2 billion on small business contracts. That is a lot of money. 83 billion of that was the US military and the military spent an additional $50 billion on subcontracts with small businesses. So let's just pause there. $154.2 billion a year spent just on small business contracts. So if you're not selling to the U.S. government, if you're not selling to the U.S. military, you are not selling to a huge group of clients that are purchasing almost assuredly what you are selling. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now, these next slides, you know, these really disturbed me as an acquisitions officer in the military. And what it should mean for you is this is a huge opportunity. Less than half of 1% of all U.S. businesses sell to the U.S. government. Less than half of 1% of all U.S. small businesses are actually selling to the U.S. government. Now, that amazes me. But you know, if you look at the amount of money spent, and we know exactly how much money they spent, and we know exactly how many small businesses are selling to the government. And when we do the math, that's $2.35 million on average per small business that has sold something, a product, a service, technology, you name it, to a federal agency in 2021. Now, in reality, some businesses sold $500 worth of office supplies, and some businesses sold you know, $42 million in cybersecurity services. But, you know, so there's a range there. But this is an amazing amount of money being spent on small businesses with a with a fraction of a percent of our small businesses actually engaging in the process. So in, to add to this, the number of small businesses selling to the U.S. government actually decreases each year. Over the past 10 years, we've been down 40%. So there are 40% less small businesses selling to the federal government now than there were a decade ago. And that is a shame, but it is also a huge opportunity for you as the small business owner. Now, the government typically is spending more money each year, almost always spending more money each year, year over year. So hey guys, I just wanted to bring up a slide that showed you some of the things that the federal government is buying. And we can see here, you know, everything from engineering services, and by the way, that B stands for billion. So $145 billion, this is over the past three years computer systems design services, professional development training. And by the way, professional development training, 
That could be anything from leadership training to, and this is true, uh, social media, Facebook live training, um, sexual assault prevention training. The, the list is, re is really long. So if you have a specialty training company, you would probably fall in that category somewhere. So it, it would behoove you to take a look and see how much the government is buying for the training that you sell, that you specialize in. Uh, even uh, real estate agents, laundry services, $1.4 billion in three years in laundry services. Landscaping, 1.8 billion. I mean, keep in mind, every military base is actually a small town or city. So they have golf courses, they have playing fields, soccer fields for the kids, there's schools, there's residential housing, all that needs to be maintained, it needs to be built. There's infrastructure for government office buildings where government civilians and military are hanging out in restaurants, police stations, hospitals, and everything that goes into a hospital. We could be talking about this literally for the next four hours, but I want to keep the this brief here uh, reasonable in length. Accounting services, legal services, there's just a lot of spending in a lot of different areas. All right, guys, before we move on, I just wanted to give you a little bit about my background so you understood that you know I didn't just read a book and put a brief together here, that I actually did have some experience to share with you. So I spent 20 years in the Air Force. I came in in 99. I spent the first 10 years of my career flying intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft. Um, and you can see I have some kind of wacky pictures there. You know, I got checked out right before 9-11 happened. So I was pretty busy the first decade of my career flying missions um, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and others, uh, other worldwide reconnaissance operations. Now, halfway through my career, I switched into acquisitions. Now, acquisitions is the profession of putting companies on contract for the government. This is what makes federal acquisitions or military or defense contracting so much different from commercial sales, right? So, you know, the government can't just go out and buy something like, you know, me or you go out and buy a car. We can buy it from any dealership we'd like to. We could buy it from our friend's dealership. We could buy a car, whether it's expensive or cheap, just based on our own personal budget and what we like. The government can't do that. The government actually needs acquisitions professionals to make purchases for them. So, what that really means is 99.9% .9 of anybody you speak to in the military or the government is not going to be able to make a purchase from you. You need to sell to the acquisitions offices. And that's what I was in. It's a profession, just like being a pilot or a navigator or a security forces uh, police officer. So 10 years in that, I worked with everything from MIT, technology startups, developing new technology to the, the huge military weapon systems that you hear about in the news and, and things like foreign military sales. You can see bottom right hand corner there. I'm in the Middle East managing a foreign military sales portfolio from one of our partner nations. Now, after I retired in 2019, I started a consulting business. And, you know, part of this was because as an acquisitions officer, it really blew my mind how few small businesses were selling to the federal government. You know, most people in my background don't get into this line of work, meaning into consulting and helping businesses, uh, small businesses after most go to work for the big defense contractors or back to work for the government. But one of the sticking points with me was when I was trying to solve problems, solve um, problems that the military was having or other federal agencies. Often the solution lied with a small business and most of the small businesses, as we saw the numbers, most of the small businesses were not engaged in the defense contracting process or selling to any government agency. So I would have to go out and reach out to them and either teach them or I would see the ones that were involved in the process and just struggling because they didn't really understand what some of the larger companies did on how to sell to the government. What is that process? What does it really look like? So I started a consulting company in 2019. Now I've advised, trained, and actually sold for over 400 different businesses and you know we can go back and read the testimonials but just to show you that you know i've been in this since i've retired and i really have a passion for helping small businesses sell to the military and sell to the government and i want to increase the number of small businesses because that really does make our country better it puts better solutions in the hands of our war fighters keeps us safer and it makes our government run smoother and more efficiently in addition to the consulting work I was doing, and by the way, selling. So I still sell for one client. So I I have a quota currently and I go out there and I sell and I'm good at it. So I do know what it means to sell to the government and have that on my shoulders as well. We have this podcast and I bring this up because this has allowed me and my team to speak with some of the world's leading subject matter experts on federal procurement. We started off as Government Sales Momentum Podcast. Now it's DOD Contract Academy. You can find that um, on your favorite 
you know, host of podcasts and whatnot. But, you know, we've had some great guests on, former procurement officers, people that are involved in investing in companies that are selling to the government. We have, here's a uh, retired Colonel Orndorff, who was a contracting officer, defense contract management agency, who has amazing advice for companies that are, that are in it, that are on contract, how to navigate that. Here we have Brian. You know, what's great about him is he had no ties to the government, no ties to the military. In fact, he had a film company he, that filmed movies like Fast and the Furious uh, with uh, drones. So he had a drone video and film company, and he ended up pivoting and winning multiple Department of Defense contracts to build mission planning software for drones. So he pivoted what he was doing in the entertainment industry to the Department of Defense. It was extremely successful. And that's, by the way, a great episode, which you can check out on DoD Contract Academy podcast. Now, uh, what this means uh, for you is that I've put companies on contract for the government. I've sold products and services to the U.S. government, and I've coached, I've instructed, I've helped hundreds of small businesses sell to the U.S. government, almost all of the federal agencies. So I have a deep understanding that goes from understanding what the contracting team on the government side is thinking, uh, what makes them want to put you on contract, how to make it easy for them. I understand what you need to do as a small business to sell. And I'm constantly talking with the world's leading subject matter experts on this topic. It's something that I and my team are very passionate about. So all that to get to secret number one, it's the biggest mistake companies make. And it shouldn't be a secret. It's just their federal acquisition regulations are thousands of pages long, and it can take a long time to learn how the government contracting process works. This is how a lot of companies that approach federal contracting for the first time, this is what they think it is. You see a solicitation on SAM.gov, meaning the government puts out a solicitation, a request for a proposal or a request for a quote. We want to buy you know, laundry services, like we saw in one of the earlier slides, uh, and maybe for Hanscom Air Force Base. So the company writes and submits a proposal, and they expect to win the contract or be in the competition, but that is not how the process works. Now, you can win a contract that way, but it, your likelihood of success, if this is what you're doing, is very, very, very low, if not non-existent. So let me tell you why this is the biggest mistake. The biggest mistake is that the contracting process actually starts six to 18 months before that solicitation ever comes out. All right, so let's talk about secret number two, this, this market research phase. What is it? Well, we know you want to be on contract. We, From the previous slide, we you probably realize you need to write and submit a proposal. This is not always true, but to get that contract, this is what companies think they need to do. They see a solicitation. Yes, the government usually puts a solicitation out for work, but there's this market research phase that exists before that, and that is where you need to focus. So if you take anything else away from this brief, you need to understand that you've got to start before that solicitation in market research. Okay, so what is that? Put yourself in my shoes as a new acquisitions officer, right? So I was flying aircraft for the first 10 years of my career. Then I walk into acquisitions. Now I'm in charge of a cybersecurity effort. Well, I'm not a cyber engineer, nor was I, at least at the time, an expert in cybersecurity, but we would be given the challenges that the government and the military were having, and I would have to find solutions for that. How do we find those solutions? Well, I don't just write a solicitation. That would be a waste of my time because I don't know much about cybersecurity. Now, we do have an engineering team that does independent research, but a lot of what we're doing is reaching out to the industry experts, and that's you, right? So if it's the laundry services example, uh, I'm going to reach out to those companies and see, hey, you know, what should be in my solicitation? What are the best practices right now? Who has past performance? What types of companies are out there that can perform these type of laundry services? Maybe I need to do a massive amount of laundry services for an entire base of personnel for thousands of people. Well, only some businesses are going to be able to handle that, right? Um, and we're going to talk about you know, how you can use this phase to make the government want to put you on contract. You can influence what the government is going to put into that solicitation. You can influence if they're going to make this a small business opportunity or not. You can influence if this is going to be a sole source contract to your business and avoid this whole solicitations piece here. So let's talk about what that formula looks like. This is why you guys signed on here for this webinar, for this briefing. So the formula that wins government contracts, you could probably assume, or you probably suspect that it's going to take place in that market research phase. And that's exactly right. So let's talk about the formula. What are the things that you need to do in order to sell to the government? Now, 
This is what companies that are successfully selling to the Department of Defense, other federal agencies are doing. This takes place in the market research phase. And the first thing is you need to put together a roadmap. Now, one of the major differences between the federal procurement process and selling commercially is the fact that all federal procurement information is public. So what that means is we can go to both free and paid for sites that are out there to do our research and know exactly how much the government spends on our product or service. We can know exactly who is buying our product or service down to the actual acquisitions office, meaning we talked earlier about how most people in the government will never be able to buy anything from you. It's going to be an acquisitions office. So we can see down to that level of detail what offices are making the purchases in my realm, right? So if I'm that laundry services company that we saw on the previous slide, I want to know, hey, what office is it? And if it is the Ricky Howard office in uh, the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center, and they buy, you know, $900 million worth of laundry uh, services, well, they're probably going to be one of my top customers. So the companies that are doing this successfully, they're going to know, they're going to have their top three, top four, and they're going to focus there. So that eliminates 99% of the garbage that you know most companies get entangled with or start looking at and getting distracted with. And you can be extremely focused. And when I know that, I can use that same information to see how those offices make purchases. How does the Ricky off Howard office buy laundry services? Are they using different types of contract vehicles? Do they offer sole source awards to small businesses? Do they like different certifications? Are these usually wrapped up in larger contracts, which means it would be a subcontracting approach? There are about 50 different parameters we can look at there, and it's going to dictate very specifically what you need to do to sell to that agency. And you're going to know who to contact, where the conferences are that you need to attend. There is a lot that goes into that. So once we have that step-by-step -step roadmap, what companies are doing is they're identifying opportunities and they're finding them out ahead of the solicitation. So you remember that uh, slide we had earlier about the big mistake, how companies see a solicitation, write a proposal. Remember, we want to be in the market research phase. We want to identify those opportunities 6, 12, 18 months prior to the solicitation coming out. So now we know the exact offices that we want to identify those opportunities in. And then once we have those, this is the last step of the formula we want to influence. Now, influencing can be suggesting different requirements that could be in the upcoming solicitation. This could be helping the government office actually understand what they're trying to solve. You know, just as an example, the laundry services company, right, with the Ricky Howard office, they're meeting with the Ricky Howard office. And now they're saying, hey, look, you know, one thing you may want to consider is we have an environmentally friendly process of washing clothes and it saves water. It meets, you know, presidential mandates and, you know, yada, yada. And if that office puts the environmentally friendly piece as a requirement into the solicitation, well, how many competitors have you just eliminated that don't have that process, Right. Maybe all of them. And if that's the case, this could be a sole source award to your, uh, to your company, which means we would skip that entire competitive process. But if not, now you're going to have less competitors when you are putting your solicitation, when you put your proposal in. And also you have a relationship with that office. So you've helped them write the solicitation. You have a relationship with them. They probably want to put you on contract. And we still have, you know, fair competition laws on the government side when they're putting you on contract, but you are so much more likely to win when you go through this process for all the reasons I just cited. And I also want to point out most companies, most businesses do not take advantage of this. Most companies aren't putting the work in here. And you know the government understands and knows when you're putting the work in and you're working with them, it, it helps them and it helps you understand the full requirement when the solicitation comes out. You're so much more likely to win and not just win once, win repeatedly because that relationship that you have just developed that is going to be critical for your continued success in selling to the federal government. And that's how you win contracts. Let's look at a couple of people that we've worked with um, over the past couple of years. Here's Oliver. You know, Oliver's company, Street Smarts VR, they made over $15 million selling to the US military, and they're on over 50 different bases right now. now they have a virtual training system, uh, which is amazing and which is really uh, making great strides in how our security forces uh, train. And then they're in other federal agencies as well. But you can see that, you know, in a small amount of time, you can generate a significant amount of revenue for your small business. Software LLC is another great example. They were one of our first clients. Uh, they've won SBIR contracts, and they've done over $13 million in federal sales. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, how do I implement everything that I just learned here so I can be successful selling to the government and bringing in that extra revenue and helping the warfighter doing those things that we talked about? So 
we have something here at dodcontract.com called the five-week defense contract roadmap. This is where we personally work with 10 small businesses to help them sell and be successful selling to the military and to the other federal agencies. And the reason we do that, the reason I work with you on this is because every business is a little bit different. There's intricacies uh, that are going to be involved with, say, that laundry services company that aren't going to be involved with a cybersecurity company or a software company or a law firm. So we want to make sure that you're successful. And so the first thing we do is a government sales audit. You fill out an intake form. And that's where I'm going to personally audit your business. I'm going to look at what it is that you specialize in and see how that aligns with government spending to make sure that the opportunity is there for your business, to make sure that you can be successful selling to the federal government. And I'm going to then deliver you what that audit looks like and what that outlook is going to look like. The next thing we're going to do, this is in week two. Now we're really taking a look at your solution and how the government is making purchases on that solution. So we want to know what the government's buying. Do you have to tweak something one way or the other? Maybe focusing a little bit more on uh, on the training piece or if you have a, a software tool that the government is looking to maybe modernize their current system. How do we do that? There are a lot of different tweaks that we can make to ensure that what you're selling really hits on what the government's need is. And we can also take a look here at things like you know, how many offers are coming in per solicitation? There are a lot of parameters I mentioned we can find out. So, you know, you may have three or four different service offerings. One of them on average gets maybe 75 proposals uh, per solicitation, but another one of them gets two or three, right? It's very important to understand when we are trying to decide where we want to focus because we want to find a good niche for you that you're going to be successful in. So that's what we do during week two. We want to have a good, clear focus. We're not trying to sell everything to everyone. We're not, even if, if you have a hundred things that you're selling, that's great. We want to focus on one of those things. And that's what we're going to do. One of those things, we're going to focus on three offices to sell those to. So that's what product alignment looks like. Now, I mentioned three. We want to know the top three offices that you want to focus on. You know, during the government sales audit, I'm going to tell you, hey, what are the three agencies? What are the top three or four agencies that buy what you sell? How much of it are they buying? But now we want to get really specific. And so there are ways to determine the actual acquisitions offices that are going to be involved in each of those agencies. So we wanna know really who you're targeting there. And there are a lot of ways to do that so we can get very precise. So remember, the more precise that we can get during this defense contract roadmap uh, program, the more successful you're going to be. Okay, week four, this is really where things get fun. This is where we build a pipeline of leads. This is where we're looking for those opportunities before the solicitation. Now, this is an art form, but I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to be able to find those leads. And you're going to find some of them during this week here. And you're going to start building that pipeline. I'm going to show you how to organize all of your leads. And then you'll see here in the next steps here, you're going to start understanding what you need to do with each of them to start engaging and start winning those contracts. All of this gets rolled up into your step-by-step -step roadmap, okay? So we talked about that. What do you need to do to be successful? You need that step-by-step -step roadmap. So we take everything that we learned here to build out a very precise path forward designed specifically for your small business that you have worked with me on, that I've worked with you on, so you can start pumping those leads into your roadmap and we can start hitting those other two areas, right? So in five weeks, you're going to have a roadmap. Now, I want to be, I want to be clear I'm not saying in five weeks, you're going to have a government contract. That is not that is not going to happen. In five weeks, you're going to know exactly what you need to do. You're going to have your roadmap. You're going to have a very clear step-by-step -step path to selling to the US military and other federal agencies. Okay, so the government sales audit, your product alignment, your top three offices, building your pipeline, and then your step-by-step -step roadmap, that in and of itself is worth going through the five-week course, considering what you could potentially be earning selling to the federal government. But again, I want to ensure that you are successful. I want to ensure that we are putting quality product services in the hands of the warfighter. And I want to make sure that you, know, you are guided along the way. So I've included some additional things in our roadmap offering here. So first, you're going to have group coaching. So we have weekly group coaching through these five weeks. So I can answer questions and ensure that you are staying on target, stay, staying you're focused, understanding the training that I've provided, understanding the audit and the information that I've given you, and the deliverables that you are going to have to produce on the backside of this to ensure that we have that roadmap. So that coaching in and of itself is going to be worth your while. The next 
I want to make sure you truly know how to influence the federal sales process. So we give you all of our on-demand training that's associated with influencing federal sales. And, you know, there's a lot there, but, you know, know all you need to know is step-by-step step what you need to do now, right? So you don't have to understand all the federal contracting or all influencing right now. You just need to know with the leads that you have, what are some of those steps that you need to take? And we cover that in influencing this federal sales process. Now, you may not even be registered to sell to the government, right? So I know some people in this are going to be registered already and they've been trying for a while. Others are just brand new and they want to, maybe you have a successful small business, but you want to get started selling to the Department of Defense. So we want to make sure you know how to register your business. So we have our free course, our, I shouldn't say free, but we're including it here as a bonus on registering your business to sell to the government. It doesn't take too long. You can usually do it in a couple of weeks and actually get your registration. We walk you through that entire process, show you exactly what you need to do. Zero to Hero Gov Network. If you are in the boat where you've never talked to a federal agency, uh, kind of like Brian was in the slide that we showed earlier, we're going to show you exactly how to build your government relationships, right? And, you know, look, you actually, people that have come from the military or the government and then start a business and start selling, they may have a little bit of an advantage, right? Because they were in there, they speak the language. But as far as the relationships are concerned, for the most part, they are not, the government's a huge place. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people. They probably do not have relationships with the acquisitions offices that make purchases for what it is that they're selling. They have to develop those relationships themselves. It's actually not very difficult to do that. So just like Brian did, we're going to show you how to go from zero to having a very strong and thriving network of relationships in the offices that you're going to be selling to. Capability statement. This is something else we're offering here. So it's a one page marketing document, but we give you examples. We show you what needs to be in there. We give you a checklist to go through that. So you're not going to be asked questions and then not understand what the answer is going to be. I want to make sure that you have everything you need to get started and to truly succeed. So capability statement. May be a small thing, but it's something you now don't have to go out, uh, pay someone to put together for you. You don't have to figure out what should be in there. So we're going to give that to you. I'm going to tell you exactly what I wanted in a capability statement when I was receiving it on the government side. And then finally, DOD Contract Academy for one year. Uh, look, this is a uh, on-demand training program that we have at dodcontract.com. Uh, I think you're going to find this extremely beneficial. There's a ton of training in there and you just never know what question you're going to have. So one week you might have a question on, you know, registering for the government sales, right? It might be about uh, North American industry classification codes. It could be about, hey, you know, I've scheduled a meeting with the government. You know, what should we talk about in there? What should I ask for? You know, those are the type of trainings that we have in DOD Contract Academy. And it's going to be great for you to have for a year because you're going to be able to answer those questions for yourself as you need them. You don't have to go through the whole thing at once, although some people do. Uh, now, I don't think this would be complete if I didn't sit down with you at the end of the five week period to go over the roadmap that you've built and to make sure that it's accurate and that we have built in you know, a, a certain level of review on my side to make sure that we have put something together that you can execute and be successful at. So we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one review where we walk through the roadmap, we talk a little bit more about your business to ensure that we've answered all of your questions so that you know, hey, what are the things that you need to do? Again, every business is a little bit different. And by the way, every team's a little bit different, right? You might not have uh, you know, three or four people on your staff to do things. It might just be you, the business owner, right? So and if that's the case, then we're going to tailor that roadmap. So it's going to be uh, focus items that you can handle that are going to make a difference in your business selling to the government right now. So each one's a little bit different, but we're going to ensure that you have something that you can execute and be successful at. Now, total value is well over $86,000. Now we can see that when you total everything up, the government sales audit, the product alignment, the targeting, the pipeline of leads, the step-by-step -step roadmap, weekly group coaching, influencing the federal sales process, registering your business for government sales, building out your network, your capability statement, access to our academy for a year, and the one-on-one -on -one roadmap review. We have a total value of over $86,000. And I have no doubt in my mind that this program is worth that and more. You saw yourself how much small businesses can make selling to the federal government. And this is why I was able to sell each of these things as projects, consulting projects to other companies. But I want to be able to offer this to many small businesses. I want to make this more.
My goal is to increase the number of small businesses selling to the federal government into the U.S. military. And in order to bring more businesses in, I wanted to make this program more affordable. So this five-week program is going to be on sale for $18,500. There is no question that this investment is worth what the potential outcome could be for a small business that is successful selling to the Department of Defense to the other federal agencies. But for the next week, I'm reducing this even further. So if you're interested in our five-week program, this is the right week to be watching our webinar and talking with us because the next week, it's going to be $9,500. After one week, it's going back up to $18,500. Today, on Friday, October the 7th, we have special price, we have special bonuses, and we have My goal is to increase the number of small businesses selling to the Department of Defense and to the federal government. And although what we offer is certainly worth over $86,000, in an effort to bring more businesses in and put them on a path that makes sense where they can be successful, we have been able to reduce the cost to $18,500. Now, this is going to be the normal sale price for our five-week program, where I work with you, with a business, to make sure you have a successful roadmap a successful pipeline, a successful path forward to those continued contracts from various federal agencies. But for the next week, this is on sale for $9,500. So if you're seeing this and you're interested in our five-week program, you hit us at the right week because when this seven-day period is over, it's going to go back up to $18,500. Keeping in mind that the average small business is making $2.35 million in a government contract revenue with the federal government, at least in 2021. I don't have a doubt in my mind that the services that we provide are worth well over $86,000. In fact, some company, I don't have a doubt in my mind that, I don't have a doubt in my mind that the services we provide, the roadmap, the audit, the assessments, and the training that we're providing, I don't have a doubt in my mind that everything we provide in our five-week program is worth over $86,000, but I want to bring more small businesses into the federal procurement space. I want more small businesses with great solutions, products, and services selling to the U.S. military and the other federal agencies. So in an effort to be able to bring in more companies... I don't have a doubt in my mind that our training, I don't have a doubt in my mind that everything we offer in our five-week program is worth over $86,000. But I want to make this more affordable so more small businesses can start successfully engaging with the Department of Defense and with other federal agencies, start winning those contracts and providing a quality product solution to the warfighter, to the other federal agencies. So we were able to create this program and reduce this price to $18,500. But if you're interested in our five-week program, you hit us at the right week I don't have a doubt in my mind that what we're offering in our five-week program is worth every penny of $86,000. I don't have a doubt in my mind that what we offer in our five-week program is worth over $86,000, but I want to attract more small businesses to... I don't have a doubt in my mind that... 
I don't have a doubt in my mind that I don't have a doubt in my mind that what we give in our five week program is worth over eighty six thousand dollars. But we want to attract more small businesses so we can see an increase in the small business. I don't have a doubt in my mind that what we include, the training that we include in our five-week program. Now, I don't have a doubt in my mind that what we include in this five-week program is worth over $86,000. But I want this to be affordable for more small businesses so we can see that increase over the next couple of years. We can see more small businesses selling to the DOD, selling to the other federal agencies, and not only starting to sell, but selling on a clear path to success. So we were able to reduce the price of this to $18,500. This is going to be the normal sale price of our five week program. But if you're interested, you've come during the right week. For the next seven days, we are going to be selling this, not for $18,500, but for $9,500. Now, keeping in mind what you could potentially make selling to the federal government, a $9,500 investment is more than reasonable. I've certainly invested in my own small business many, many, many more times than this number. But we are only accepting 10 small businesses. 10 small businesses at $9,500. We have a special price and we have special bonuses, which you've seen. We also have a special guarantee. So if you're asking yourself, hey, what's the guarantee that this is going to work, that this training, that we can put this into place, that we can implement this? So for this week, we have a special price. We have special bonuses, which you've seen but we also have a special guarantee. First, if my audit reveals that there's no government spending in the product service area that you're selling in, then you get a complete refund. So if you come to me and say, hey, I sell widget A and I go and I look and there, the government just doesn't buy widget A, I will give you a complete refund. So you'll fill out the intake form. I will do my audit. Then we're going to look at my results together. And then I will refund your money. No question asked. If, look, if the government's not buying what you sell, there's no point. First, if my audit reveals that the U.S. government doesn't buy what you sell, then you get a complete refund, no questions asked. That's what's great about government contracting is we can look at all of the information. So I can go in and I can see how successful you could potentially be. If they're not buying what you sell, you will get a complete 100% refund. If my audit shows that the government is spending less than $1 million a year, then you can opt out. So why do I say that? Why is that number relevant? Well, the government spends a lot of money every year. So we, if we see a small amount of spending, and a million a year is small for what the government's doing, then you will have the opportunity to opt out and get a complete refund. So really is going to depend on what you're after with your federal contracting efforts and what we see. Our first guarantee, if during my audit, I see that the government is not buying what you sell, then you get a complete 100% money back guarantee. First, if my audit reveals that the government doesn't buy what you sell, then you get a complete 100% money back guarantee. Secondly, if my audit shows that the government is spending less than a million dollars a year, on what you're selling, then you can opt out of our five-week program for a full refund. Now, the reason we use that $1 million mark is because the government spends a lot of money every year, and a million dollars actually isn't that much for the government. And that's going to tell us a few things, right? It's going to tell us that the government is buying what you sell, but maybe in smaller quantities. So you probably wouldn't be able to expect a $3 million contract one year if they didn't exist. You will have to decide if what we see aligns with what your financial goals are. 
And finally, if you complete the program and take all of the roadmap action steps and you fail to win a government contract, then you will receive 100% money back guarantee. So our first guarantee, if my audit reveals that the government doesn't buy what you sell, then you immediately will get all of your money back. First, if my audit reveals that the government doesn't buy your product or service, then you will receive 100% refund. Our second guarantee, if my audit sees that the government spends less than a million dollars a year in the product or service category that you're selling in, then we are gonna have a conversation about that and you will have the option to opt out and receive your money back. And the reason for that is you may not be able to hit your financial goals or your sales goals by selling to the DOD or other agencies if they're spending less than a million a year. Every industry is a little bit different. So we are gonna have to look at yours and make a determination together if this makes sense for you. And our third guarantee, if you complete our program and take all of the roadmap action steps and you do not win a government contract, then I will give you 100% refund. I legally can't guarantee that you're going to win a federal contract, but I am extremely confident in our training and the path that I give to my clients. So what I'm guaranteeing is if you take all of the steps I recommend and you cannot win a government contract in the set timeline, according to your roadmap, then I will give you a 100% refund. If our audit reveals no US government spending for your solution, 